so I am getting ready for an interview that I have in like, what, like an hour? These days it's like, oh my gosh, an interview? I've been applying for jobs for like a while now and I've been trying to like build out my freelance career and like reach out to potential clients. But of course the job market has been kind of a intense place over the last year or so. So I'm like, wow, I got an interview. I'm excited about it. I know some people might think it's like silly to get super dolled up for an interview, especially one that's over Zoom, because mine is over Zoom. But I think it is actually secretly a confidence hack. I am so nervous on interviews typically, at least before they kick off, because once I'm in the interview, I'm hoping it is, you know, more conversational. You know, that is more so where I thrive instead of like rapid fire questions. But yeah, um, I think if you look good, you feel good. So I figured why not get ready together today? I know that Zoom has that like clean up your appearance option, but it is simply not enough for me. This isn't to say I don't feel like comfortable in my own skin, but like I want to enter into the interview feeling like I'm already slaying it. I think I'm gonna do just really light makeup. As per usual, I don't really wear <laughs> heavy makeup, but I might even just do without like my usual cat eye today. I love this blush. This is a Juvia's Place and it is Coral Rose. I honestly think I will have this blush for just years to come because it is so pigmented. So you really only need like the tiniest little bit and I like to blend it into the apples of my cheek. I'm really into Igari makeup and I love how the blush is applied. It just makes your cheeks look really rosy. I look a little more awake. Now for the longest I felt like makeup has been like the finishing touch for my outfits but the more that I've been incorporating accessories, the more that I feel like when I go without, I'm just missing a little bit of something. So like in the process of trying to incorporate more accessories and things into my outfits, I've really started to believe that the secret to a standout outfit is in the details. With the v-neck top that I have on today, I thought adding a beautiful little necklace would be the perfect little finishing touch for this outfit. And that's why I'm so excited to be partnering with Anna Louise today to bring you jewelry that adds that perfect finishing touch. I absolutely adore these two necklaces necklaces that they sent me. I am a sucker for a beautiful flower motif and this particular necklace really really spoke to me. Just look how cute this is. I think this will look perfect with this. Oh, this is so cute. I really just love how dainty this looks on me. I love this chain necklace as both a really versatile base and a really beautiful standalone piece as well, which I'll go ahead and try on now too. This is so pretty. Oh, oh my gosh, I love this. I love how dainty both of these necklaces have just made me feel like, I feel so pretty. I feel like the secret is really in the details. It's really easy to elevate an outfit with beautiful pieces like these. I might prefer this over the other one with this top. So I might just stick with this for the interview, but I think they really have something for everyone with long lasting, tarnish resistant jewelry essentials that you not only look good in, but feel good about wearing because their jewelry is also crafted with the planet in mind. Ana Luisa is carbon neutral and climate neutral certified offsetting 100% of their carbon footprint. I think this is the one that I'm going with today but I'm so excited to incorporate both of these beautiful necklaces into my wardrobe going forward and even more excited to share them with you. And if you're looking for a way to elevate your own style now is your chance. I'm going to leave a link in the description box below for you to check out Ana Luisa and get 30% off your first order. Order now for yourself or as a gift that will surely impress. If nothing else I I hope like the interviewer is just impressed by my style. So cute. That was 
such a good movie. I'm like, I'm usually like a Marvel hater, I'm not gonna lie, but I really enjoyed that. <laughs> This is the artist's way. I have honestly been waiting very eagerly for this to come in the mail. It is, from what I understand, because I'm trying to go in as blind as possible, a self-help book for artists. The tagline is even a spiritual path to higher creativity. To be pretty frank, I'm not sure how spiritual I'm gonna get with this book, but I do feel like I have been in need of some sort of kumbaya as far as navigating my burnout. I think over the past couple of years, if I could be just super honest, having navigated tons of rejection in the animation industry, as well as my path kind of meandering from what I initially envisioned for myself, has left me with a lot of doubt, I guess, in my creative profession. And it would be nice to have a little bit more clarity on myself and my direction and my ideas for myself as an artist. And because of the uncertainty of the industry right now, and a little bit of my directionlessness since deciding that I did not want to keep pursuing design in animation. I have been feeling kind of floaty over the last year. I initially was open to just being a little bit directionless and more open to possibilities because I feel like my scope for my career was very narrow initially and through me being a little bit less clear about what I want professionally and just creatively for myself, I've gotten to do a lot of other things, a lot of fun and different things outside of the animation world or adjacent to I should say. However, my actual practice of art has become so discombobulated over the last few years that I really, really felt like I should sit down and just kind of figure that out. And so I am excited to read this today. I have nothing to do besides wait for more interviews actually. Like while my interview went well the other day, I have another one coming up and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's the weekend. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to read this book. And um, we can dive into the introduction together today. This has been such a great read and I'm not even at like week one yet. I am just finishing up the basic tools and I'm about to go into my first week. Thought this would be a great stopping point at least to start my notebook because it's talked a lot about doing morning pages, even mentioned the concept of an artist date, which I actually think I do a little bit of with my Too Many Hobbies series, but I could definitely stand to do a little bit more. I really just wanted to take a moment to stop and acknowledge the contract with you guys which initially I was thinking I would just sign because I've already marked up the book a bit with quotes and things that I thought were really interesting but I also picked up a notebook a few days ago I love a little color of this but I knew I was going to be using it for some kind of journaling practice like a more intimate like thoughtful journaling practice I used to journal a lot during the pandemic and it was really like 
a very healing and cathartic thing for me to do back then. I was a 2020 graduate and it was a very turbulent time for me, like adjusting to post-grad life in the midst of like an epidemic. And at the time it was like one of the only things that really kept me kind of just feet on the ground, head above water. But after some time, like my life changed even more. I moved out and like, I just didn't keep up with my practice. And over the years I've even questioned like, you know, did I really need to continue journaling? And Julia Cameron definitely had something to say for that mindset as well. I genuinely, yes, I did feel quite bored with the idea of journaling and like just not super into the idea of doing it anymore. And she says, boredom is just what's the use in disguise. And what's the use is fear. And fear means you are secretly in despair. So put your fears on the page. Put anything on the page. Put three pages of it on the page, which she's referring to the morning pages, which are kind of like a stream of consciousness. Diary entry to do every morning, which even though I've shared that I had become bored and disillusioned with like journaling, I am excited to do the morning pages just to see what comes out. I really have avoided making journaling a practice in my life again. And if journaling is like the barrier between like an explosion of creativity for me, then I think it's worth it. As for this contract, I wanted to, instead of signing it in the book itself, uh, just start my journal and that's what I'm going to do.